Yes, Yaya Thomas. Fourth in the nation at his weight class, 14 and one. Two pins on the year, taking on Jake Harrier, a red shirt freshman for the Fighting Illini. And if you're Harrier going against a prolific wrestler like Yaya Thomas, he's won 11 matches in a row. What's your game plan? Jake is probably, Jake Harrier is probably gonna be looking to keep this match close uh, and maybe score a couple points at the end to steal it away. That tends to be what guys do against Yaya. Uh, but honestly, you never know. Maybe Jake comes out scrapping, looking for points early. It all, it all depends on, uh, on what his outlook on this match is. So far, Yaya dictating the pace of the hand fight, looking for a little front headlock offense, and he'll come around with a low single leg and, and get two, the takedown. Two points there for Yaya Thomas, a quick two. But Jake Harrier up to his feet once again. Harrier wrestling tough here, looking for his escape on the edge. He's got a nice split going on. Uh, this is a tough position to escape from, but Yaya's got to make an effort to return him and they'll uh, get ruled out of bounds. So a quick takedown there from Thomas. We're only 46 seconds in to the first period. You can see the look on Harrier. One point there for Jake Harrier. Yaya electing an optional alternate start there to let Harrier back to his feet. So Yaya is looking to get more offense, score more points, and uh, get the Wildcats back in this dual meet. Thomas there with a the single leg fake. Hold a 2-1 lead. As we have one minute gone here in period one. Some forcefulness there from the 149 pounder. Yeah, yeah working a little two on one. Staying sticky on Harrier's arm. But Harrier doing a good job uh, nullifying Yaya's offense at this point. He's gotta be careful though. He is, uh, Yaya's doing a good job controlling the center of the mat. Good job by Jake Harrier to circle back in, get his butt to the center of the mat and avoid that potential stalling call, which is, those have been super important in these matches so far. And a reset there from Harrier. Thomas with an underhook, tries to go in for that left leg. Solid counter move there from Jake Harrier as we approach one minute remaining. Another good reattack attempt for Harrier. Looking for a short drag off Yaya's single leg. And the redshirt freshman bringing some toughness, but Yaya Thomas with a big time takedown. He's up 4-1, now with 45 seconds remaining and building that riding time as we approach 30 seconds of it. Harrier with a good, uh, good drag attempt trying to come behind Yaya, but Yaya says no and scores off a drag of his own. Good little action by both guys. Now with 30 seconds, Yaya Thomas approaching a minute of riding time here on Jake Harrier. Good job by Harrier getting to his feet here. But Yaya's gonna nudge him out of bounds and they'll get a restart in the center of the mat. Good stingy top wrestling by Yaya Thomas. With 17.1 remaining here in the first period, Yaya Thomas eight seconds away from a minute of riding time. This is a big point. If Harrier can get an escape here, he's back in this match. Yaya needs to be looking to ride Harrier tough for the last 10 seconds of this period. Harrier gets to his feet though, doing a good job fighting Yaya's hand, and he'll get his escape. Big time point there, late here in the first period, an escape point. But Yaya Thomas, with over a minute of riding time, and that will come into play at the end of the match, of course but a 4-2 advantage right now for Thomas and the Wildcats. Yaya needs to be thinking about bonus points in this match to get us back into the dual meet. But uh, Harrier doing a solid job so far, but Yaya's definitely been more offensive and the more uh, successful offensive wrestler in this match. And Thomas allowing Harrier to get an escape. So now it's a one point match, 4-3, Yaya Thomas. Yaya right back to the center of the mat, controlling with the fakes, stalking Harrier down on the edge of the mat here. He'll come digging with a club and an underhook. Harrier with that nice fake. 30 seconds, here's something from Thomas. Nice counter move there from Harrier. Harrier able to get his hips back there, 
But Yaya's in with a pretty deep underhook on the edge. One of those super important edge wrestling positions again with uh, Yaya in, in the more dominant offensive position by controlling the center of the mat. Now approaching the midway portion of our second period at the 149 bout. Yaya Thomas of Northwestern and Jake Harrier of Illinois, a 4-3 advantage for Thomas. Now some hand fighting here and some offensive gridlock with 50. See if Thomas can turn something as they're on the edge of the mat. Hand fighting once more. Yeah, yeah taking single leg attempt off that underhook. Harrier staying in bounds. And Here's something from Thomas. Another counter move from Harrier. Yeah, yeah is definitely controlling the offense here. And now it'll come with a low single and get Harrier ding for stalling. That's four or five offensive attempts to none. So uh, Yaya doing a good job staying on his offense. He's got to look to finish on the edge here. Thomas on the edge with Harrier, 15. Refs have a no call. Thomas trying to drag Harrier back in. He's doing it ever so slightly now with six, five. Can he get Harrier back in bounds for the two points? He's not going to. Stingy defense by Harrier on the edge in that deep split. Uh, Yaya didn't get the takedown, but he did get that stall call, which as we've seen has been so important, these stall calls in these matches. And that's, that's been the case all season. Yaya now with an opportunity on bottom to widen his lead and then get back to offense on his feet. So, Out of the opening whistle, Thomas trying to work up to his base and he gets the escape, it's 5-3. Yaya Thomas over Jake Harrier. From a team standpoint, uh, definitely want to see Yaya on his offense really pushing it in this third period. He is an unbelievable offensive wrestler. And I mean, all around, his defense is great too, but uh, definitely want to see him get into his shots here in the third period, not giving Harrier an opportunity to get back into this match. Nice fake there from Harrier. Some to the woos of his teammates. Now with 75 seconds remaining, the Wildcats need some team points. Yeah, yeah working a Russian tie two on one on the edge, working Harrier out of bounds, and he'll get another stall call there for a point. So now 6-3, Yaya Thomas. Now Yaya's got some momentum here with a minute to play. Yaya in on a single leg Harrier with a shin whizzer. Similar position to what we just saw at the end of the last period. Harrier, stingy defense on the edge. Yaya unable to collect the, the takedown. A similar affair for Thomas, like we saw on the opposing end of the mat. Unable to translate the single leg into some points for his team. However, that stalling call consequential for Yaya Thomas, now at 6-3 with 30 seconds. And if you're Harrier, you gotta do something. Some nice hand fighting between both wrestlers, now with 20. Thomas trying to go in for something, as is Harrier, now close to 15. Thomas tries on Harrier's left leg once more. Scrappy hand fighting now with 10. Thomas with a hook, now with five. And that's going to seal the deal. Thomas with the late push. Yeah, yeah, frustrated there that he wasn't able to convert on more offense. Uh, Illinois matches up pretty well against uh, Northwestern at this weight class. Anka Enkmandok, just a gritty, explosive wrestler who steps up into these big matches. But uh, Illinois is going to be looking to get the momentum back. And Anka's got to be looking to get to his offense and make this this Illinois wrestler know that he's not going to be bullied. He's not going to be pushed around. This is Northwestern's house. And Anka Inkmandak will take on Edmund Ruth. Edmund Ruth has been on an absolute onslaught. 18 straight wins, most recently in the January 14th win against Purdue. So Anka Inkmandak going against 10th ranked Ruth in the 174 matchup. We'll have 174, 184, 197, 285, and it will all culminate with 125. 
What really got emphasized in the back room there was that this is a culture matchup here. Head coach Matt Storniolo telling the Northwestern wrestlers that they gotta come out, they gotta come out hard, and they gotta make sure that they're getting to their offense. They have to have an attitude. Likewise, I imagine the conversation in Illinois' room went the same way. They want to come into Welsh Ryan Arena and leave a mark. They want to come in here, pull upsets, get dominant wins, and take this dual meet. So uh, be prepared for some high-paced, chippy wrestling in the second half of this duel. A minute 15 in, no points. Rather an offensive stalemate from Edmund Ruth and Anka Inkmandak. Anka Inkmandak, not ranked compared to his counterpart of the fighting Illini. And that speaks to the great season that Ruth is having. Uh, I mean, he's been really successful so far, and Anka's out here looking to get to his own offense against a guy who he's not expected to beat. And uh, that's a bit of a mental battle, coming in, stepping up against an opponent who's having an awesome season. Uh, something to notice, Anka has very aggressive upper body techniques. He's working for these underhooks here. A little offensive effort by Anka there, just controlling the mat with his offense from the upper body efforts. We saw Ruth try to go in for a right single leg fake. Now with 45 seconds, neither wrestler on the board. Here with 40. Solid hand fighting and scrappiness from both Ruth and Inkmandak as we approach 30. Ruth trying to pinpoint that left leg on Inkmandak. Inkmandak doing some solid defensive work here for the Wildcats. Now with 15. Both guys just jockeying for position there. Little shot attempts from both. Ruth initiating that offense and Anka coming back with a counterattack. Back and forth. Some agility like moves from Inkman Dock. No score, but that's a high paced hand fighting first period. Both guys jockeying for position, not giving ground, and looking for offense in those split second moments where it presents itself. Edmund Ruth starting on bottom, Anka Inkmandak on top. Ruth 20 and one on the season. And Ruth with an easy escape against Inkmandak to put the Illini up on the board. It is in a crucial set of matches to try to get back in this. Really explosive stand up by Ruth there. Did a good job sealing off, preventing Anka from getting his hands locked in that, that standing position. Uh, did a nice job getting his escape there. Another round of solid hand fighting. The agility and deflections from Edmund Ruth have been paramount in thwarting any success here. A possible mat return coming for Edmund Ruth and Up the fighting the Illini. Position. Ruth able to force Ankh over to his Here's back. Here's some back points here coming for Edmund Ruth. A body lock from Ruth. That was a big time performance here from Edmund Ruth. Four back points. It's now 7 0 Edmund Ruth. All of a sudden, Edmund Ruth in major decision territory as they're ruled out of bounds with 51.1 seconds remaining here in the second period. This was a huge turn of events for Illinois. Big effort by Ruth capitalizing on Anka's upper body attempts with a big body lock for six points. Anka's got to be looking to stand up quick here and just get back to his offense. Ruth wants to be looking to control Anka on the mat, lay on a gritty ride, get that riding time up, and go into the third period in major decision territory like you said, Sam. And Ruth has over 40 seconds of riding time building to his name as we approach 25 seconds remaining here in what has been an eventful second period for Edmund Ruth and the fighting Illini. Now with 15, Anka Inkmandak trying to build that base, but some airtight defense here from Ruth, thwarting any ability from Inkmandak and the Wildcats. Now 
about to get some back points here for Ruth as the final buzzer sounds and it is 11 to nothing. Edmund Ruth and he is showing, putting on display why he has won 18 in a row. Really great top wrestling from Ruth there, staying gritty up until the end and that's what opened up that, uh, that near fall opportunity for him. Good reshot effort by Anka there off of uh, a far out shot from Ruth but they'll be stopped since the clock wasn't running. So uh, some clock issues here. Looks like they'll put 145 on the clock. The Illinois coach, Mike Poeta, giving Edmund Ruth a little bit of a pep talk. Anka Inkmandak getting the same from his coach. And if you're Inkmandak, the hole is building in an 11 nothing. Here's another great mat return here and a possible pin-like scenario coming for Edmund Ruth. Another big Here's body lock big from Ruth. Ankh able to fight off his back, but that'll be the technical fall for Edmund Ruth. And a big time performance there from Edmund Ruth. That's five team points that catapults the fighting Illini in to the lead, it's 11 to 10, Illinois heading in. Uh, notice the team score being 17 to 10 with two matches remaining. If the Wildcats want to win this dual meet, they need bonus points at either heavyweight or 125. Matches where they're favored to win, but just winning is not enough here. Lucas is going to be coming out looking for bonus points, and Roblowski is going to be looking to steal this match away and seal the deal for his team. A win from Matt Rabluski would seal the deal for the Fighting Illini, who are looking for their 50th win of the series. Lead the series 49-34-2 against Northwestern. And as you mentioned, Lucas Davison and Michael D'Augustino, who we will see in our final match of the evening. Pressure is on the Wildcats to snap a two-match skid. Now here with 30 seconds gone, in period number one, some solid scrappy play from Lucas Davidson and Matt Robluski. No points on the board, however, from either side. Shot attempt from Robluski, looking for that long snatch single leg, but Luke's not gonna give that to him. Davidson looking for a post high crotch of his own, trying to get to this offense and after a scoreless first minute. Solid snap down there from Lucas Davison. Who will be the first to strike? As we have 75 seconds gone here in period number one. Hand fighting at a premium here in period number one. Luke doing a really good job coming in with that inside tie, that collar tie, working his snaps, controlling the center of the mat, more just solid hand fighting. Rublowski doing a good job preventing him from getting anything too threatening though. Lucas Davison up in the intensity as we approach two minutes gone here in period number one. Once again, both wrestlers on their feet. One minute to go here in the first period. And Lucas Davison had that hand, but Matt Robluski, two point takedown against Lucas Davison here late in the first period. That's a big takedown from Robluski. Davison protesting it somewhat. It looked like he stepped on his toe with that snatch single right there. Take another look at this, Lucas Davison. Unhappy, talking to the head ref. Now Davison with the easy escape to go 2-1. Davison quick on the attack now with 40 seconds. More heavy snaps from Davison. He's not happy with that takedown from Obluski. Yeah. But he's gotta stay patient and just get to his offense, build a lead, chip away. He's behind in this match and he can't look to just all of a sudden be, you know, 
pinning this wrestler. This is a solid opponent. Luca, uh, really aggressive in this hand fight. Definitely want to see him get to some offensive opportunities for the Wildcats. Now five seconds remaining. Some snap downs traded. And the first period buzzer will sound as Matt Robluski with a 2-1 advantage over Lucas Davidson. Heading in to period number two. So Lucas Davidson, take another look here with Robluski. This is what made it two to one. And despite Lucas uh, really controlling the hand fight in that first period, Robluski able to get a slick snatch single, collect that takedown quickly. But Luke able to get to his feet very quickly in the second period. And right back to this heavy hand fight in the center of the mat. 2-2 now in our heavyweight bout. 30 seconds erased from period number two. Some scrappiness from Robluski. Testing the waters, the offensive waters of Lucas Davison. That was a heavy overtie snap from Lucas Davison to clear that collar tie from Robluski. He's just staying really aggressive with these big snaps. That's a lot of power on display from Davison. Now Davison with some hand fighting of his own. He's trying to go for a mat return. Nice solid defense from Robluski. However, Davison gets the two points. It's 4-2 Lucas Davison at Northwestern with 53.1 seconds remaining. Let's take another look at, he, at this. Nice solid defense from Matt Robluski. However, Lucas Davison catapulting himself into the lead off that two point takedown. Lucas with, with some really big underhooks there, threatening something upper body, possibly trying to put Robluski on his back, but that just gives him the opportunity to score a single leg in those crucial edge of mat wrestling situations, or rather one of those crucial edge of mat situations. Matt. And now he's looking with a hard top ride, returning Robluski. And Matt Robluski trying to get up to his feet with 30 seconds to go in, a, in the second period that has had twists and turns all over. Matt Robluski almost to his feet for an escape. Robluski unable to get the escape. Lucas follows him behind and they go out of bounds. Solid defense here for the fourth ranked wrestler in the nation. Lucas Davison now 20.1 seconds to go. Matt Robluski trying to build a base. However, Lucas Davison also trying to build some riding time as we approach 40 seconds of that. Now 10 seconds remaining in period number two. Davison with a 4-2 advantage on Matt Robluski of Illinois. Now with three. The riding time clock coming on. And period two will come to a close as Lucas Davison has a four to two lead over Matt Robluski. Matt Robluski will be on bottom to start the third period. Lucas was able to throw his leg in on Robluski to end that period. And he'll get it again, his right leg deep in, leg riding here, looking for offense from top. Robluski just holding his base, trying not to give Davison any opportunities to turn him. Davison he eclipsing a minute of riding time. But Robluski not giving anything easy to Lucas Davison and the Wildcats. Robluski now all of a sudden up to his feet, but a solid mat return there it's a big from mat Lucas return. Davison. Energizing the crowd here with 75 ticks on the clock. Lucas once again getting that leg in. He's looking to turn Robluski on top. He knows how important this match is for the team and how badly he needs bonus points to put the Wildcats back into this dual meet. Robluski, on the other hand, doing a really good job keeping it close and not giving him those opportunities to score points in the third period. Davison approaching two minutes of riding time now. Now with 45 seconds to go, he has a 4-2 advantage 
has really flipped the script, but now here's Rabluski trying to build a base. Davison says no. Now with 30 seconds to go. Rabluski just got hit for stalling. His head's in the mat. Not doing too much on bottom, and you have to act on bottom. You have to work for your escape. Now 20 seconds. Lucas Davison with over two and a half minutes of riding time. Rabluski hit with stalling again. Now it's 5-2 Lucas Davison. Now with five. And Davison and the Wildcats get a much needed victory here at the heavyweight. Lucas Davison, a 6-2 win over Matt Rabluski. And Michael D'Augustino, we didn't see him in the last home match against Minnesota in what was set to be a highly touted match. He's back on the mat as the fifth ranked wrestler against Maximo Renteria of Illinois. And a win here for Northwestern, like you said, doesn't seal the deal for Northwestern. However, if you're Illinois, a win would be great to add to your lead. You have a four point lead now. So Renteria of Illinois has his team inching close to victory. Now Michael D'Augustino. This is one of those matches that shows how wrestling's not just, oh, that'll get stopped for potentially dangerous, apparently. Michael on in on a good uh, single leg attempt there. But as I was saying, one of those matches that shows that wrestling isn't just an individual sport. You're fighting not just for yourself, but for your team, for a team victory and those team bonus points matter so much in these tight Big Ten dual meets. And D'Augustino and Renteria back and forth with some scrappiness here in this opening minute. D'Augustino in on two shot attempts there. Renteria just clamping down in the hand fight, trying to move around, frustrate D'Augustino. D'Augustino trying to go in on a single leg Solid defense there from the Illinois 125 pounder. Duck under attempt by Renteria. Mike comes up in an underhook. Both wrestlers scoreless with over a minute and 15 gone. Nice snap down there from Renteria. Mike in on another shot, and Renteria in a position to score here. Renteria. Good defense from D'Augustino on the edge, and they'll go out of bounds. Nothing Ren goes from there from Renteria. Who is in on a reshot effort off of D'Augustino's attack. Similar storyline to last match. D'Augustino's looking for bonus points, but he's just got to chip away. He's got to build a lead, establish himself in the match, Look for solid offense, because Renteria is just trying to frustrate him here. He's showing his quick footwork, not letting D'Augustino get in close, get into the ties that he wants. And uh, he, he's wrestling the way that his team wants him to right now, which is stingy. Renteria has been scrappy and has been a nuisance when it comes to D'Augustino building any offensive mobility. D'Augustino tried to go in for something and Renteria once again saying that's not gonna happen. Now with 35 seconds remaining here in period one, we're still scoreless. Renteria trying to go inside. D'Augustino does the same. Out of bounds with 27.6 to go. And you can see the difference in atmosphere between the Illinois bench and the Northwestern bench. Now with 20 remaining. Nice snap down there from Renteria. 15 to go here in period one. Renteria had a shot attempt there. Now with 10 seconds. Get another snap down here with five. Both wrestlers on their feet and the first period buzzer will sound. Still scoreless here at 125. D'Augustino elects to be on bottom. Can get on the board with an escape.
Tiarasino quick up to his feet, gets his escape, despite Renteri, his big mat return effort. And now Diagostino's in with this right side underhook. Renteria trying to push him out on the edge. Just staying frustrating again. Diagostino on the board first. Renteria thwarting any of the offense from Michael Diagostino. 30 seconds gone here in period number two. Once again, both wrestlers gridlocked. Northwestern needs bonus points and the win to secure the victory. A stalemate is called with 1.19 to go, and if you're Illinois, you've built a lead worthy enough to get you a win here. Now Renteria with some hand fakes. If you're Illinois, you're definitely liking how this match is going so far. Renteria has been able to frustrate Mike's offense from neutral. Another long shot attempt from Mike. Renteria just able to dance away from it. Renteria, solid on foot defense from the long shots that Michael Diagostino has been posing against the Illinois wrestler all match. Now with 45 seconds remaining here in period number two, still a one nothing advantage for Michael Diagostino. Renteria showing some defensive prowess. Another long shot attempt by Mike. Re-shot effort, re effort from Renteria. No yeah. takedown though. That almost spelled danger for Michael Diagostino now with 20 seconds remaining as Renteria was there for the re-shot attempt. Snap down there coming. Now here's Michael Diagostino trying to get two points in, trying to will his way back with Renteria inbounds. Trying the crowd, calling for two points. No points called for Michael Diagostino and the Wildcats. Stingy defense from Renteria on the edge. That was a position that got, that got called to earlier in the dual meet. Um, but uh, no call there for Diagostino, who was in on the first real shot effort of the night, or of the match, rather. The home crowd not liking that call of no points. However, the Illinois faithful loving it. And going into the third period, up only one nothing. Michael needs to be looking to, to score some points here. I mean, he's he needs to win this match, period. Uh, and then think about bonus points. But so far he's got legs in. Renteria stretched out on the mat, just kind of clamping up, trying to stifle Diagostino's offense from the top position. His head's in the mat. Expect a stalling call against the Illinois wrestler coming up. Now 30 seconds gone here in period number three. A crucial match deciding period with Michael Diagostino. A one nothing advantage. The ref not willing to call a stalling call on Maximo Renteria. And now Renteria is in a position, a danger position. Has Michael kept caught oh. on his back? That's four big points from Maximo Renteria. And now Diagostino's down by four points. And a 5-1 advantage for Maximo Renteria. Let's take another look at what got Renteria. That, those four points, and all but barring a miracle, sealed the deal for the Fighting Illini. 5-1 Renteria with 45.9 seconds to go. They'll start on their feet here. Now, Renteria and Diagostino. Does Diagostino have any last second magic? Diagostino and Renteria, scrappiness on display, under 30, Renteria, Trying to Diagostino puts him on his back. Now on his back. 
Renteria giving up back points here. Now with 10 seconds remaining here, a minute of riding time for Michael D'Augustino. Now with five. And the match will conclude. One point there for Michael D'Augustino. And Mike will actually lock in that major decision victory, get those bonus points for the team, and uh, tie up the team score. It'll go to a tiebreaker. Um, now, it's a 10, it says 10-1 decision, but Renteria. In that, uh, that position, Mike was in fact getting back points, I believe oh, uh, wow. Sam and I were mistaken. <laughs> Uh, Throwing us for a loop there, uh, folks at home, we apologize there. Michael D'Augustino was on top the entire uh, match going into that back um, that where, back move from, from him. So e e yep. even, even, the, even the seasoned wrestler getting some <laughs> confusion I, here. Yeah, apologies. That is absolutely on me. I think I confused Sam there. But Matt, <laughs> Mike was, in fact, on top where I thought Renteria was getting a danger count. Mike was getting back points, uh, which were so crucial for that 10-1 major decision. Let's take another look here. What decided a 10-1 decision from Michael D'Augustino and the final 17-17, just the third tie in series history. 49-34 and three this series goes to. That and now, for Northwestern, you look ahead at Wisconsin and Rutgers, and for Illinois, you look ahead at 23rd ranked Maryland and then take a road trip to Minnesota on January 28th. Well, for Jamie Berg and our entire amazing crew from Evanston, my name's Sam Barber. Your final score, Northwestern 17, Illinois 17. This has been the final presentation of Big Ten Wrestling on Big Ten Plus. Take care. <laughs>